good evening good evening everyone so today's topic for meditation is sin and the law and the verse that we are given to reflect on is romans chapter 7 verse 8 let me read it but sin seizing an opportunity through the commandment produced in me all kinds of covetousness for apart from the law sin lies dead Let's see what sin is and what the law is. Sin is any action or thought that goes against God's commandments. And sin is not just something that we do that goes completely against God's commandment, but sin is also missing the mark. So there is this game of dart and all of us will know the game of dart. The goal of the game is to hit the bullseye mark. and if we don't hit the bullseye mark we don't win the game even if we miss the bullseye mark by just a small centimeter we might get some points but we still don't win the game because that is the goal so sin is not just doing something that's completely against uh what god has asked us to do but even doing something that's a little away from what god wants us to do we see in romans chapter 6 verse 23 what the consequence for sin is the verse says that the wages of sin is death whereas the gift of god is eternal life now that we've seen what sin is what is law law is god's instruction for how we should live our lives in the old testament people were doing all sorts of things and that's when god gave the israelites the 10 commandments to tell them that this is the law and anything that they do which is apart from it is sinning and anything that doesn't align with god's law is sinning we'll be discussing on three points uh which focus on romans 7 8 the first point being law exposes sin law exposes sin by making us aware of what is right and wrong it's only through law, through the law we know what is right and wrong if there is no law we don't even know what is right and hence we don't know what's wrong as well and without the law since we don't know what sin is sin would be there in us but it would be dormant for example when we do a sin or when we commit a sin there would be something that pricks us something that tells us that we're not doing what's right and that's because we know what is right we know what god wants us to do and what pleases god and when we do it even if at that moment we don't realize it a little while later a day later a few weeks or months later something in us will keep nudging us to remind us that we did something that did not please god so if we don't know the law if we are not aware of the law if we don't read the bible if we are not conscious to what god wants us to do we'll never know uh what is right we will never have that nudging feeling we will never have that prick from our consciousness when we do a sin when we commit a sin the second point is sin takes advantage of the law sin takes advantage of the law by using it as an opportunity to produce covetousness in us when we know what we shouldn't do sin uses that knowledge to entice us and tempt us to do exactly that the law gives sin an opportunity to tempt us and lead us astray this is like when we tell a child don't take more than one chocolate the child wants to take more than one chocolate because they're curious to do that and even as adults for example when we are driving we know that we should not uh go beyond a particular speed because that is against the law but we still do it because we get a thrill out of it we are curious to see how we feel when we do it and that is sin though it is a worldly sin us going against the law is a definition of sin and this is a simple definition going back to when god created adam and eve that's again how sin began right it is when Adam and Eve were told not to eat from a particular tree but Satan tempted them 
to do exactly that. It knew, Satan knew that they should not be eating from that particular tree because God has clearly instructed them not to. God gave them everything and told them not to do one particular thing. And Satan knew that's where they should cross what God, that's where they should cross the line and do what God was not pleased with. And that is how all our sin began in the beginning. Now that we've seen how the law exposes sin and how sin takes advantage of the law, we know that this is what sin does. So how do we overcome sin? And that's going to be our third point, which is Christ frees us from the law of sin and death. That's our only way to overcome sin. In Romans chapter 6, verse 14, it tells us how through faith in Jesus Christ, we are no longer under the law but under grace. God had given the commandments. God knew that we were sinners. We kept sinning. We knew what the law was, but we still kept sinning. And the law was not sufficient for us. We needed the grace of God. And that's why God sent his son to die on the cross. He came to fulfill 2,023 years ago the law that um, was given. He came to fulfill the law and pay the penalty for our sins. We would not have been able to pay that penalty by ourselves. If we had to face the consequences to all our sins, according to the commandments that God gave us, if we hadn't followed it and we had to pay the consequences for it, we cannot even imagine the kind of consequences we have to face. It was so harsh in the Old Testament, even with the Israelites and with the kings of those days, when they did not follow the commandments, the consequences were so harsh. People were not able to face those consequences. They would, though that, Though death was the eventual uh, and final consequence, even the small consequences, I don't think any of us have the strength to face it or any of us have the strength to face God's wrath. And God sent Jesus Christ in human form to pay the penalty for our sins and he also gives us the Holy Spirit because without it, we cannot resist our sins. We, re we cannot resist our temptations. It is only through the Holy Spirit that we are empowered to resist sin and to live a life that pleases God because this is not something that we can do by ourselves. Summarizing these three points, we see that Romans chapter 7 verse 8 says or reminds us that sin takes advantage of the law and produces covetousness in us. But through Jesus Christ, we have been set free from the law of sin and death. Let's try and live a life in obedience, uh, which in obedience to God's commandments, empowered by the Holy Spirit each day. And also be mindful of how sin can tempt us in our daily lives and not let sin take advantage of us for which we need the Holy Spirit and we need to understand that it's only through Christ that we can overcome sin. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for loving us, for being gracious unto us, for sending your Son to die on the cross, to forgive our sins, to give us salvation and for ensuring that the Holy Spirit is with us each day just to help us with our daily struggles. I pray that we will be able to be conscious and not let sin take advantage of us. I say this prayer in their matches and precious name.